MVP Phoenix versus Newbie. We say it every time and we mean it every time. This is the biggest game of these guys' career so far. Maybe not for the three newbie guys, perhaps, because of last year, but absolutely the biggest game for MVP Phoenix right now. Oh, and I, I got a sneaky feeling they might pull out something crazy here. We've been talking about it all weekend, and we're finally here in the lower bracket in the best of one. So where do MVP Phoenix go? Where do newbie go? Guys, it's all yours. Newbie, I think, should open with Queen. I think they've... They've utilized it very well, and I think it plays pretty Queen well. Plays Boom. It. Of it's, I mean, it's obvious, I guess, but... Yeah. You're, the, you're the best, Ben. Thank you. Thank She's you. a very strong opening. I mean, yeah. works well into most lineups and also can punish some of the drafts that MVP will come up with. Uh, in the sense that she's a strong laner, mm -hmm. so definitely they, a good hero to first pick. They utilize, utilize it like Empire, like you don't actually know where they're going to put the Queen, which I think is very, yeah. very strong. If you always put it mid, I don't necessarily think it's a great first pick. Yeah, and there was EQO, of course, pretty much uh, the flashiest player you could look for when it comes to Korean Dota. He has brought some amazing games here in the group stage. And uh, it's interesting to see what MVP are going to go for double pickups here. I mean, obviously Leshrac and Gyro are both removed here already, along with Naga Siren and Undying. So Bounty Hunter had Bounty great success Hunter. today. And, uh, Would you look at Wagga, you're amazing. You guys are the yeah. best. Gamer Lee even got it. I, I, need, I think we need a theme tune. It's like, you keep saying you're the best. <laughs> and I keep thinking in my head, hooray! <laughs> I don't know. Wow. Brilliant. It's All right, so what's next? Come on, yeah, you've got to make it a trifecta. Who's, who's the pick after Bounty? Um, no pressure. Say Earthshaker. Oh, yeah, Earthshaker, let's say. Spirit Breaker. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Renzi. You should never listen to me, too. <laughs> Got the wrong count, man. <laughs> yeah, wrong one. <laughs> Pretty close. Yeah, yeah, close, yeah. I mean, they're going to be like... They're just showing their card right away when you pick Bounty plus Spirit Breaker. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're going to be aggressive. You're going to be looking for kills and less likely to pick Warlock, I guess. This is also not MVP mixing it up, by the way. Bounty Hunter Spirit Breaker, this is along the same theme that they played in the, in the group stage. So they're trying to keep it the same way so far. Obviously, we only see two picks, uh, but they like the Spirit Breaker starting up fights and just trying to take the aggression to the enemy early. Yeah, and I, I, I like newbies Black like Lake. when they play Dragon Knight as well. Like Dragon Knight could be a hero that goes really well, uh, goes very well against the Bounty Hunter because you want to have tanky heroes that the Bounty Hunter can't kill, so you can't make use of the track early on. But they're going to go with the Clockwork, much more utility in the offlane. Doesn't show too much of uh, what type of strategies they're going to go for. And such strong laners again. I mean, Queen already, and now Clockwork as well. He can do a lot of work on any lane that he goes to, really. So we'll see how they can utilize this. It's also like, it's like kind of a stop pick as well. Because if you pick Clock, there's a bunch of heroes you definitely don't want to pick purely because of that Clockwork pick, right? Yeah, that's, that's very true. Like, some heroes can't cast anything. It's never fun to play something like Witch Doctor against it. So Earthshaker, it, it hero, the, the list goes on. Yeah, definitely impacts the play style. And here we see Respect Van coming out from Newbie, I'm going to say, on the Ember Spirit. Definitely don't want to fight against that. Yeah, and MEP Phoenix is also taking out the Dragon Knight. So you don't want the opponent to have a lineup which is tanky. They're going to be grouping up like a Dragon Knight when he has his ultimate taking towers. That's when you feel the Bounty Hunter and Spirit Breaker becomes less useful in the game because you can't get kills and you're bad at 5 manning. So, Do you think uh, do you think Viper could be a good ban as well for MVP here, Winter? As it's mm. also one of those hard-to-kill kind of heroes. I mean, they can also go, like pick the hero just so that you upset the balance of the Queen of Pain being able to win all her, like, anywhere she goes. So when you, Yeah, when you have the Viper, the Queen of Pain kind of wants to dodge you in that sense and you weaken the Queen of Pain pick in general by having a Viper in your lineup. Yeah, especially with a Bounty Hunter. Life can be very difficult for the Queen. I'm actually very happy to see that PL ban out. Honestly, as amazing as he is of a hero, he just, fi uh, he just feels very inevitable against some particular uh, types of drafts. Amazing and inevitable are not the words I would use to describe Phantom Lines. <laughs> I think this is a sort of PG-13 broadcast, so I'll, I'll bite my tongue. Yes. Do that. Yeah. We know your stance on this. Mm. I'm with you. Just but these are two okay, carries. Wagger. We're friends now for life, buddy. <laughs> these are two carries that can escape the clockwork. For me, it seems like if you want to draft the clockwork, you need to draft against or heroes that clockwork can actually kill and mm. hold in place. And 
you know, they're, I think they're actually looking to take the fight against Newbie, even though MVP Phoenix has this really strong killing opener. I mean, yeah. Clockwork right now can kill the Bounty and the Spirit Breaker fairly. Like, if both of the heroes, like, compared to Spirit Breaker, you have equal farm, Clockwork can definitely kill the Spirit Breaker and the Bounty Hunter as well. The only thing is if you get bashed outside the cogs, which does happen, bends the Spirit Breaker. 17%. 17% of the time. Uh, yeah. It does happen. God, this is like one of my games. I'm serious, these are all heroes <laughs> I play. Oh, he really wants to play? Okay. That was a hero that I previously mentioned is not fun to play against Clockwork, but this is not about fun, it's about winning, and MVP, they want yeah. to have this hero behind them. And MVP tend to like supports that are very strong at team fighting, and Rich Doctor is generally one of those supports that really great if you can get a full duration ultimate off, so mm. it's kind of something that the team is really comfortable with. It's also his sustainability, like his heal is very good because kills are great and when you have Bounty Hunter, they're even more amazing, but they're not the end of the game. You're not going to win that way. You need to take towers and for that, very often you need to heal up after the fight. Yeah. I mean, if, I think if you look at the way C-Deck played, they would take fights where it looked like it wasn't working and then they'd get one and then they just didn't stop and the Bounty meant that that gave them so Winter much more gold wipe. when they did that. Oh wow, I hate this guy. Winter Iron is really nice. They actually don't have that much magic damage on MVP Phoenix right now. I was thinking that it might be a dazzle for a lot of their single target abilities, um, as well as giving the armor, but Winter Wyvern is a very nice support. I mean, they could go for Lina now to have some form of magic burst against the Cold Embrace, and it's a very good matchup versus the Queen of Pain, and it's one of like QO's favorite heroes as well, so mm -hmm. that could actually fit into what MVP Phoenix have, and Lina plus Spirit Breaker usually a very good combination to get, to get kills in the middle lane. I agree. I think that's a very good call, actually. It fits really good with all the stuns they have, and it can capitalize on the track and get a lot of kills for your team. And uh, as you said, countering the Cold Embrace so nicely, whenever he gets stuck, just throw all your AoE at him. At that point, though, they'll probably switch Queen of Pain to safe, just because, I mean, they don't have, like, overwhelmingly great late game. And if you want Queen of Pain safe, I think one of the main issues is actually getting outscaled. I mean, Shadowfin certainly does, still does the same thing. Like, it's just much uh, weaker in the lane against the Queen of Pain. Lina is much stronger, Templar but Shadowfin Assassin. will definitely be the team. Hey. Will, will be the hero that builds the mech for that team. And here we go, Vargas, favorite hero. Very nice. I'm happy He's back on the board. You love TA. I do. I mean, it's an amazing hero, dude. It's 10 and 5 currently at TI. Really? It's a good win rate. And it's on Dia, so it's even yeah. better that way. Like you can go for the rush with the TA very easily. It's it's actually both ways. Like Dia is nice in a way because it's easier to rush and your ancients are a little bit safer. But it's also hard to stack ancients and it's a little bit more exposed on mid lane. Dire mid lane is tougher than radiant mid lane. Yeah, uh, true. Just I mean, because of the terrain. I guess that's pros and cons to both of it. Definitely. But right now, MVP has a very strong like fighting and taking towers with the Shadow Fiend completing their first four heroes and. A newbie kind of has like a more all-rounder draft. They are very, really strong in the lane. They can take Roshan, they can take fights. Very good at ganking as well because they have the clock work. Yeah, but currently I think that newbie's five-man is like very terrifying for MVP. They yeah. need to keep it a chaotic game and try to, you know, orchestrate that with their Spirit Breaker a lot. He has a lot of pressure on him. He needs to have the right decision-making or this game could quickly uh, turn sour for newbie or for uh, MVP. Right now, Newbie is going to be looking for another support to go with the Wyvern. Maybe someone that can actually have initiation to something like a Rubik. Like, their heroes right now, the only stun they have is obviously the hook shot. So they'll probably need someone else like, to actually help them get kills apart from the clockwork. Yeah. I'm actually looking and just thinking about this game, thinking that Benchful could work well here, but it's a hero we haven't seen much at all. Yeah, why is that? Because I still feel like Venge is a super strong support, really good, but... She offers, she offers too little early on, I think. It's just that when she doesn't have items early on, especially if you don't have boots already, you're just way too weak compared to some other aggressive heroes like Spirit Breaker and so on. And it's just harder to play out, I suppose. I feel like in the prior patches, supports were always poor. And Venge is one of the best, like, super poor position sixes even. And now that supports have a lot more farm, you can get away and just have a lot more variety and versatility with huh. your picks. I think like a lot of the situations where you pick the Venge as well was because of Batrider in the past and since Batrider is sort of out of the pool right now, so Venge becomes like lower priority and if you're looking for a defensive support, there's Wyvern, there's Dazzle, there's so many better options, that's why Venge, she's in kind of a bad place right now apart from help, being able to help the team rush much better. Oh, that startup was actually very nice I think for newbie. 
that could have been a good addition to MVP's lineup. Just the minus armor between Shadow Fiend and Slaughter, they would have had enough damage to fight really strong, and he could jump the Queen of Pain, which is more important. Mm. They haven't played Shadow Fiend much according to the stats I'm looking at here. Three times, is that right? In this tournament? I'm actually thinking maybe Storm, Storm would also be a good pickup instead of the Shadow Fiend here. Oh wow. Juggernaut. Not something you see often against. Uh, you pick. You don't really pick the Juggernaut into the Cold Embrace that much. Mm -hmm. But it's really strong. It's still really strong in the lane. Pretty, like good at killing the Clockwork as well. With just one support. Like the Wish Doctor plus Juggernaut can definitely kill the Clockwork fairly easily in the lane. He's one of those safe laners as well that can do pretty well if you run away with yeah. one of your supports. You can sort of leave him to his own device if he has the Ring of Aquila, he has the Healing Ward available, mana and HP are not yeah, on he, he doesn't need much babysitting. No. He actually cannot. hasn't done that well though. I was looking at the stats for Juggernaut in the tournament so far. And he's, I think he's only won once when he's been picked. It hasn't really worked out. Why, why might that be? I mean, he got several nerfs to him when you nerf different things like Mask of Madness Lion. that is going to indirectly target him. There was a meta where Juggernaut was picked all the time, but yeah. hopefully we're not there anymore, <laughs> I think. I think Lions had almost even worse stats than <laughs> the Jug. Like according to Cinderan, when you pick Lion, then you have a Lion. <laughs> is, it, is, it the, uh, is it the is it the old draft that we maybe thought it might be, with the best of one in mind? Not exactly, though. No. Okay, no. All right. I didn't think so. All right. Time then for our first lower bracket game. It's do or die for both teams. It's Newbie versus MVP Phoenix with your commentary team of Sindran and OD Pixel. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the first elimination match of this year's international. Newbie up against the side of MVP Phoenix. Of course, Newbie, the defending champions, up against a team that's climbed themselves through the wild card. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, when you saw how powerful and how strong Newbie were last year, this is probably not where you were, would expect to find them the following year, if you were to guess about a year ago. But it's been a pretty rough year for Newbie all in all. Uh, but they've, they've kind of stepped up their game, to be honest, coming into, uh, coming into TI5. And I think a lot of people now expect them definitely being favorites in this matchup. And perhaps they can go even further and make... I would be surprised if we see a run similar to TI4, where they almost got knocked out and then just went the whole way. But uh, they've definitely shown some pretty strong games. And then on the other side, like you said, we've got MVP Phoenix, who have been a little bit hot and cold. They've had some really hot games. Uh, like, you, like you just told me, they actually won with Juggernaut against yes, Team Secret. Uh, they played that was one of their hot team, games. Yeah, I mean, if you can beat Team Secret with your Juggernaut, you know it's going to be very, very strong. And, and KP as well, he's one of those players that surprised me a lot in the group stages. Every time I've watched his performance, it's always been incredibly reliable in the sense that regardless how the rest of the team's going, you'll expect KP to always have the farm and do what it takes. We saw Naga being banned out in the draft. That's one of the heroes that he's been able to carry a lot of very tough matches through for the side of Phoenix. So it's going to be interesting to see what he does in this match against Juggernaut. And and against the heroes that Newbie's got, because they've got a fair few ways to deal with the Jug. Yeah, I was actually surprised to see them pick Juggernaut. I think part of the logic is that they want some sort of damage type that can get through Refraction, and they can do that with Blade Fury in the early stage. But later on in the game, you generally don't want to use Blade Fury at all. You want to use Omni Slash as your damage choice, and then right clicks are generally better than your spin. Um, so I guess the biggest concern for MVP is, can they deal with the Templar Assassin? Mu is incredible on the hero. I think he hasn't been counterpicked very much in this game. He even has the backup of the Winter Wyvern that they also picked the Juggernaut into, as the, as the panel mentioned. So for me, this mid lane is definitely going to be the lane to watch from the beginning. They're looking to help QO with the Bounty Hunter of Febby. But on the other side, it looks like Newbie has their number. Yeah, absolutely. They've already got the sentry down here on the side of Newbie, so they're ready to deal with Febby. They're expecting him to come in. Sansheng's there already with the Arctic Burn. And just a few hits already. Febby's down to less than 50% health. And, and this is going to be perfect for Mu here on the TA, which is going to give him that start against the SF and make it a lot harder for QO to find the edge here on the Shadow Fiend. Top lane, March getting harassed pretty heavily back on this. And it's not a light, nice lane for the Spirit Break. He's up against a Lion, so we've already got a hero that is going to be very, very hard for him to get himself out of there if anything goes down on the top lane. And potentially Rabbit, a few levels in with the amount of burst that the Quap's going to have. You've got to be very careful on that Spirit Breaker. Yeah, it's generally what we often see when Spirit Breaker's in the off lane is that he tries to force as much as many spells as possible to be cast by the opponent and then just charge out when things get dangerous. So you like, you trade health for experience. But against Lion, when he's level 2, both disables, of course, great to just shut him down when he goes for the charge away. And since Queen of Pain can slow him down with the Shadow Strike, they'll probably just be able to, you know, force him to charge, and then if they can cancel it, that could easily be a first blood. Uh, speaking of first blood, mid lane, QO. 
being pressured a bit more. They're not going to commit fully to it, but he's definitely been put under a lot of pressure here from Sancho. He's not going to have an easy lane. This is already, if it's just a one-on-one -on -one lane, it's it's TA favored. With a Wyvern in there, it's, not good time. Yeah, it's not good at all. I mean, Febby, we saw on the uh, on the bounty hunter, headed down to the bottom lane to see what he could do against the clockwork. He's now rotating back towards the mid lane. In fact, he's going to be looking for the Courier Snipe here, as we can see him going through the tree line, heading towards in between Tier 1 and Tier 2. And it's not coming out at the moment, so Febby won't find anything. If he goes up to the top, I mean, I guess there's killing potential with the SP on that lane. But at the same time, it's going to be hard against a Lion and a Quap, you know. The Quap in the sense that she's going to be able to escape and Lion's going to be there with the defensive capabilities to stop any kind of aggression. Yeah, there's no easy target uh, right now for the Bounty Hunter. This is what we saw also during the group stage quite a few times when, when a team picks Bounty Hunter very early in the draft. Sometimes the, uh, the other team would just pick like a difficult to gank cores either because of mobility or just based on tankiness. In this game, I'm... I'm with you. I'm slightly worried for uh, Bounty Hunter's game impact here. So he is looking for the courier, but uh, you know, I feel like this trick is just outdated. It's, yeah, it's, it's, everyone it's, it's knows it's not coming working out. anymore. It, it yeah. simply doesn't work. So it seems like a waste of time in most games. Uh, I believe the only courier snipe we've seen so far at the main event was the the Prophet the teleport the Prophet from uh, Bone Seven. Good old Bone Seven. Unless there might have been one in the mid game. There, there was definitely one more, at least one more. But it was not like a bounty hunter sneak between your towers at minute two. That just doesn't work. And he's coming back to the mid lane to try and put a bit of harassment down onto Moo. But with the start that Moo's had, he's fine with it. The refraction just turns around, gets a few hits in. The sentry's still there. The side of MVP haven't been able to de-ward this one. So it's very hard for Febby to, to find any kind of productivity in this mid lane. The raise is coming from onto Moo, bringing him low. But Moo, of course, he has got the backup of the wave and Cold Embrace is ready and waiting. We're going to see a charge actually coming forward into the mid lane from the base, from SP. And it's going to be interesting to see if they can do anything off the back of this, because Wyvern's still there in the sidelines, ready to back up the TA if anything goes down. Let's see if he follows through here. March leading the way, and he's going to go for... Oh, no. Holds back just to the last minute. It's, it's a bit of a risky one trying for the TA here. Yeah, they knew Mu would have uh, Refraction again as well. He had it on for quite a while, so it would be off cooldown. Interesting to see that MVP have only oh, done... Oh, he's got to be careful. These raises. I mean, he's really playing on the edge of his life here. Yeah, I'm very surprised with how well QO is doing in this lane. I mean, I think it's become more of a... Like, this matchup is less one-sided than it used to be. Generally, if you had Shadowfiend against TA, you would need a lot of help, but they've just kind of, you know, traded help Bounty Hunter for the for the Wyvern, and Shadowfiend has definitely been the one doing the best so far. 19-6 and six against 13-5 and five on Mu. Um, now, the good news for Newbie, I guess, is that as far as stacks go on the Radiant, actually, never mind, they have a triple. I thought they only had a double, but they do have a triple stack already prepared for the Shadow Fiend in the big camp in the middle. And uh, that could give him even more of a head start since looking over at Newbie, they, I believe they only have one double as their right stack. Yeah. Oh, they also have uh, another double in the bottom line. So I don't believe the Ancients have been stacked either yet for the, no. for the side. Once for uh, Newbie. Oh, I just Actually doing a pretty good job at stacking uh, multiple camps. Across the Coming up to five minutes in, no one's died as of yet, both sides. I mean, we've seen the rotations coming out from the Bounty Hunter, but he's unable to find anything as of yet. Ping's coming out there, aware of what's going on here. It's the best of one elimination game. Yeah. Kills can, kills can take a while sometimes. Well, Fabi's found Sansheng here. He's going to go in with a few hits, and with the slow as well, going to chase it down. Arctic Burn is available, so he's going to be able to fly if he needs to. Nah, he's going to be all right nonetheless. Just a few right clicks in there from Fabi, forcing back the Wyvern. And still in the mid lane, as you said, the lead here for the S7. Moves catch oh, top lane, they're going to go into March. 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 Rabbit going forward here with the. And now with the stun. March is out in place, he's got the charge, he's going to be able to get it off there. This, I don't think the poison damage is going to be quite enough. He should be okay, he's going to be very low. Bottom lane though, KP went in onto June. June, oh! The final right click there from KP reaching around the tower. And that's going to be your first blood there to KP. And as I said, this is the carry, the player. You've got to be really careful about mid lane. Moo going very aggressive here onto QO. It's not quite enough though, QO is just a little bit too tanky at this point for Mu to get the damage in. Yeah, that could be very different if Mu is level 6, so they have the traps that's going to allow Wyvern to catch up and of course Mu to dive him into the tower. But so far so good for MVP in the early game, they do get the first blood. Juggernaut, one of the, one of the carry heroes with the most kill potential this early on in the game though, so it is to be expected. Even a, a hero like Clockwork, who generally is decent in the lane against Juggernaut, you know, you just cog him out and try to burn his mana. He is still very susceptible to getting on this Lashed because he has to come in a little bit closer for last hits. Unless if he only goes for Rocket. As now June is going to walk in and ward. No, he didn't ward actually. He's just going to take him out. And yeah. 
I don't, I'm not sure about this hey, movement from of June here. Yeah, June popping the cogs. One race comes from to June. Q1 looking for a second one. We'll find it. Corey Brakes isn't going to save you against those magical raises. But the side of Newbie, they want to try and find somebody in return. Move on to Febby. We'll find the kill. Now move with Sanchez. Can he turn it around as Q1? No, Sanchez's got to run. Uh, but Q1, that's going to find a kill. It's a double kill already for the SF. And now they're going to try and chase for more. Going up to the high ground. KP moving and he's got level four Blade Fury. And he's not going to be able to quite close the gap between the two of them, but double kill for the side of MVP, bringing it to three for two on the scoreboard. Right, that was some weird movement from June there. I thought he was going to plant the ward, but that ward is old. So he basically just ran in, popped his battery assault, started running at Witch Doctor, only to realize, wait, he has boots too, so I'm not actually catching up. Then he ran, instead of running right, I, I guess maybe there was a Juggernaut oh. coming from the right, so he was just caught in a bad position. March looking for the charge there. March did, of course, worth no to die at the same time on that top lane. And, uh oh, uh, oh okay. Right, we're going to have a little pause. Just wait on for a few seconds, but so far, as you're saying, MVP, I think they're having a the favorable start here, but you've got to look at the Queen of Pain. She's been having a great time up on the top. The CS has been pretty much impeccable. She has found herself that kill onto the Spirit Breaker already, so it's going to be up to how much Rabbit can do on this quad across the map and, and what he can do against the Juggernaut. Yeah, it's it's pretty much a dead even game right now when you look at experience and gold. These, these amounts are completely negligible at, at minute seven, so uh, just, yeah, looking across the board, I want to say Relative to expectations of how I thought this laning stage would go, this favors MVP. The Shadow Fiend is going to find really good farm in the jungle, I think. Uh, the lanes that I was expecting. Going better for MVP, but at the same time, Clockwork has actually found a lot in the offlane. Let's not forget June's Clockwork 17 CS to the 6 of March Spirit Breaker. That is the big difference and why uh, Newbie are pretty even on gold is that offlane where June will probably be finding level 6 at a reasonable timing, and if he can get a fairly quick blade mail, that can be very difficult to deal with for a Shadow Fiend, who generally tends to go mech first before BKB. So that could be a little bit of an, uh, a timing window there for Newbie. We'll see. The show is back on the road here as we get ourselves on. I'm surprised as well that if you look at the Spirit Breaker level-wise, he is doing as well as the clock, because he's in a lane against a Queen who's, who's come up to 20 denies, so a lot of XP being taken away from March, but he's found things elsewhere in the map. We see him in the mid lane now that SF stepped back to use the jungle camps, giving March that capability to get himself up to level 6 and get the Nether Strike online. Yeah, that's going to be very important. A big part of the Spirit Breaker pick here for MVP is to counter Queen of Pain, as they saw that in the draft order. Queen of Pain first pick, they immediately respond with Bounty and Spirit Breaker. When you pick it so early in the draft, it's very important you make the most of it. And, uh, well, he is closing in on level 6 at minute 8, so... That's pretty good. Uh, the offline for Numi June has now got his level 6 on the clock. Moving towards the rune spot here. QO and Nuts are about. He's going to just drop the cocks here. They're trying to go in with the Maledict as well. Ju's got to be careful. Corner Brace is going to help him for the time being. But QO, he wants the kill. Moving in with one raise. Should be able to find the punches after. Stick charges from June. And now the hookshot. Trying to turn it, but it doesn't matter. Ju's down. is going to lose his life into Moo, though, as they find the kill and return. And it's simply a one for one trade there in the river. But of course, favoring the side of Nubia as they get that kill on the SF for Moo on the TA. Yeah, this is the. If you're a newbie right now and you can choose one hero to kill and one hero to get the kill on, I think this is the this would be your first pick. For TA to kill Shadow Fiend right now is is perfect. And Mu is gonna take advantage of his position already being over there to just go and do the ancients. Very effective at this point with his movement pattern. And he should overtake the Shadow Fiend now in net worth. I, no, actually not. He's still 400 behind. Uh, but he has 2-0 on the TA, so having a a pretty good start as expected. It is very difficult for the Radiant lineup to gank him. And of course, Sanchez here in the mid lane, looking towards his level six, just coming to the edge of, of level four. But once that Winter's Curse is, is online, we can expect to see Newbie go a little bit more aggressive in time to group up. There's actually going to be a Smokey on the bottom lane from Banana and Rabbit moving, and they do have the Sonic Wave available. If they can catch out KP here, but he's got the Blade Fury, he's got the Omni Slash. He's all alone, though. There is no backup from the rest of his team. He's going to die within one second if he gets hexed. Let's have a look. Let's see if they can find it. Juni's got the hook shot here as well. They're trying to move in, and here we go. Jumping forward. Blade Fury's been baited out. The question is, do Newbie want to go deeper for this? Looks well, like they're going to leave it here. KP's going to be able to keep his life intact there with that Blade Fury. Good reaction there. Yeah, the moment he gets hexed, he's dead. Any TP support will not be able to arrive in time whatsoever. So. It's a smoke wasted. Good news for MVP here. And uh, AP AP actually looking for a block. He can solo him if he reaches him yeah. here. He'd love it, but June, he's well out of it. 
Top lane, March has now got that level six. He's ready to go, ready to charge onto someone if he's being. And MVP actually grouped up as four in the mid lane. And we saw this as one of their stats. These are MVP Phoenix is one of the teams that likes to group up very early and go for the pushes, go for the fights. Yeah, and what better hero to do it with than Juggernaut with the healing ward, of course. Loving his skill build this game, by the way. I think these days, more often than not, it is worth it to max the Blade Fury. Especially when you're playing against a hero like TA, you just want to get a close and personal with the Blade Fury in the early game. The scaling is very, very good. Absolutely. And also very nice, of course, against a team that's running a Wyvern. In the sense, you can get that magical damage through the Cold Embrace. Cold yes. Embrace isn't going to save the heroes every time. KP moving in, looking about it, but June is there, ready and waiting for the hook shot. Sansheng as well. It's going to be a hard fight for MVP to take if they want to go up to the high ground here. And they are going to hold off on this one for the time being. They might slow play it a bit until they get the mech. QO should have that within the next few minutes. Uh, I believe he is currently about 600 off. So there's a charge to the Queen of Pain. He does not have... Oh, he does have a mango, though. TP in from Jug, who has... This is a problem for Rabbit. The charge onto Rabbit. Rabbit's going to blink straight away, but they're going to go for this one, potentially. March continuing on the charge. He's going to need a bash or two. Now oh, he's going to turn on this. The TP's come out. He's a little bit spooked. He's going to go for the TP. They haven't got anything to catch up. But the damage with the Sonic Wave, they'll bring him down. And, and that's what you get for TPing out in front of the tower. Very quick reaction here from uh, Newbie. Realizing they can go for that. And they seemed very confident they could get that kill too. He wasn't waiting with the Sonic Wave until the last second. He just blew everything immediately. The Spirit Breaker there will fall. The trade-off for MVP is getting about half a tier 1 mid, which I don't think they're very happy with that trade-off, considering that they were probably expecting to kill the Queen of Pain in that situation. Now instead they will be looking for Banana, but he's in a very good position. If Spirit Breaker comes in with a charge, there's no way Banana doesn't see it halfway. We'll just hex him next to the tower and probably just bring him down with Impale Finger and any sort of help from the side. And we'll see if he can turn this one around because uh, with Nuts and Febby in the neighborhood, March is going to want to go all the way in for this one. Here we go, but the Hex is there, as you said. He's going to try and turn it around with the Earth Spike. Now June coming in with the Cox, holding March in place, the finger as well. March what a cast go! It's doing a lot, it's not quite enough. Now it's Nuts is in trouble as well, but now only June is Sunshine looking for another kill for the side of Newbie. They're going to chase down Nuts. He's walking around with a healing one. It's not going to save you. Heal that up, Mother Drucker. Two kills for Newbie, and maybe even more Q and Febby coming in, Febby with the track. Maybe MVP can try and salvage this, find something in return. Oh, the Shuriken bounces, they'll find the white man. Now they turn to Rabbit, he's got a blink in one second. It's not enough, KP with the Omni Slash, finds something in return, and it ends up being a two for two trade between the sides. Very, very important here for MVP Phoenix that they get a little bit of a trade off in the end there. Again, March is gank. Unsuccessful. He's currently 0-3-0 on the Spirit Breaker. Not what they drafted it for, but ultimately ends up setting up a decent fight for them, which might also result in a Tier 1 tower mid. TA is very low on health and kind of has to go back to base. Queen of Pain, 13 second respawn. Wyvern, cooldown on teleport. I think they, they've got it. Yeah, with the double damage from Kua, they make short work of the Tier 1. More money's the pocket at the side of MVP, and of course, we say it a lot, but Newbie, they've got to be careful about these engagements because Bounty Hunter with the track is going to make it favorable for MVP every single time. You know, it's a two for two trade, but MVP with the edge because of that track card. QO got a lot of money out of this. I believe he also got the last hit on the tower. No, wait, that went to Juggernaut. So that's going to be his full drums. Going for quite of an early mid game centric build here rather than a farm up build. The classic Juggernaut build we used to see before a couple of patches. Is, uh, Ooh, a lot of points charge, but there's a lot here again. March says, I'm out of here. Oh, uh, that could be Curse. Delicious Curse, cancelling the TP. Four heroes going straight in onto KP with a Hex as well. There's no way that fish can flop away. He's going to go down, and they're looking for March as well. There is a hook shot available. Is he going to try for it? Now, March is out. March is out with the charge. But getting the Juggernaut, that's big there for Newbie. They do trade it for a tier one again, though. QO finding that top tier, tier one tower, but it won't. it's a one for one trade on that, and they get the Juggernaut. So definitely favoring Newbie in this exchange. Yeah, and they get this two. And it goes on TA. She's closing in on a pretty fast desolator here. We're probably looking at, let's see, what's that going to be? Uh, 17 minutes, 16, 17 minutes from, uh, from move. That's pretty early with treads and bottle. And Aquila, by the way. And one. And TP scroll. Very nice indeed. Yeah, yeah. Don't forget the TP scrolls. Back towards the mid lane. Plus money. Drums now finished here on the jug. QA. Starting the pressure here, they've found two of the tier ones. They're still yet to go down off the bottom lane to try and get the push back on, and there might be a bit of an engagement here. Rabbit and Moo towards the river with Sansheng as well. Kua trying to get himself in, but the side trap slowing him down. And it looks like Moo, Banana, and Sansheng will be able to escape. They can't quite close the gap. Baby can't get the vision there for the trap. 
and Nubia will simply just back off and, and MVP will go back to their half of the map. And it is, by the way, going to be a 15 minute Dessa. When he takes this Ancient Camp, he will have it. And that could set up for Roche. Between Desolator and Meld, you've got minus, what is that, minus 15, I think, armor? Pretty sure. Yeah, it's minus 15 armor on Roche with Mel Strike as well as that, so. Very powerful as Banana is going to find Femi here. This is going to be a very easy kill. Wait, he smokes by oh, mistake. He smokes. That's not a dust, son. He does get the dust out in the end, and they'll find the kill, but a, a bounty hunter down and a smoke down. March looking for the TP out. Nothing to cancel that one. March will escape. Febby, not as fortunate there. If Clockwork wouldn't have uh, used the hookshot there, they might have found March as well on the high ground here, so. Fortunate for him that June panics a little bit in the moment. Oh, eight to six for the side of Nubi favoring them at the moment, but QO with a superior amount of fun. He's very close to his BKB as well. And once he's got BKB and mech, and, and with 1,000 gold to go, if they can get this tier one here as well, he's going to have that in the next couple of minutes, and he's going to be very hard to fight into them. This is a very risky push from MVP. There are four, there are four heroes pushing. Their bounty hunter is very far away, so they don't have the track vision. And at any point, Nubi's heroes can port in. They're going to play it safe and back out. They've got some decent damage on this with the Shadow Fiend. It looks like they're going to double back in here, the side of MVP. They're still hanging around here on this bottom lane. A lot of things up for the side of Newbie. Winter's Curse is available for this defense. And well, we're going to see the Queen be able to grab herself this double damage rune here. Just waiting to see if anyone else comes towards it. Bottom lane, that's going to start to get the push on again. MVP, they've got to be careful. Sanchez moving in here. Trying to look for a QO. We'll find the slow here with the Arctic Burn. KP's actually blade through straight into four of them. He says, we're going for this. And then he says, no, actually, we're out. Nuts backing up as well. Hookshot now to QO. Going to break it up in the river. KP can't get past. Sonic Wave onto two. Now they're looking for KP here with a Hex. Death one's been dropped. Nuts with the high ground with the Winter's Curse. Catches Nuts from the high ground. Catches the Death one. But he gets the Omni Slash out. KP, can he find a kill? One more. Oh, yeah. Two, but again, Newbie coming out on top as they take down both the SF and the Juggernaut. Absolutely crucial for the outcome of that fight, by the way. Something I believe we didn't see on camera. Febby goes and steals the, the double damage rune. So Queen of Pain was saving it for the TA, and Bounty steals it right in front of her face Whoa. and tracks her up. Slows her down and prevents what could have been a disastrous fight for MVP as it was shaping up. They do salvage it decently, though. At least they find something in return, but nonetheless, Jug and SF. Oh, my God. Be careful here. He's out here. He's starting to get rocketed down. We'll take a couple more of those. Level 2 rockets, so. Oh, that's as well. I mean, on the Witch Doctor, he's managed to find himself the point boost already, of course. Going to be working towards that Aghanim Scepter. We'll see if he's able to get that up in good time. And QO. And he's still just short of the money here for the recipe because of that death. That has set him back a little bit on his. They're going to smoke oh, on the other side of MVP. No, they're not going for this. There is, they no, going way. For there is no way they can think this oh, is a good idea right Fabi's now. He's going in. He's, he's going to All right, they're out. just checking. They're just checking. Oh, oh I got him. Oh, you're not going to TP away from that one. March comes in. Uh, that's awkward. Oh, he's going to get a blink away. But KP, Q and Nuts moving in. Can they catch out the Queen of Pain? She's going to have another blink here in a second. She's got a Yule's complete as well. Rabbit should be able to get herself out. But... A very close encounter there with the Spirit Breaker. Newbie now, they're looking for a smoke. Moving into the jungle, they've got a hookshot available. Q and Febby farming up a camp. It might be their last camp for a bit of time, because June coming in, the sun spike onto Febby. Looking for Q and Febby with the race is bringing Sanchez low. The finger onto Q and Febby, he's, he's going to fall almost out of yes. They do find the kill. June stuck at the cocks. He pops it down the death one. Hit onto June. Oh, and bring down the clock one. KP looking for me now. Moving in. KP like this with Winter's Curse. Onto Q and holding March and notes back. KP getting low. Moon, look at the damage he's doing here with the Desolator. One more hit. Not quite enough to bring that KP now. March. With the bashes, what a fight, Moo! What a fight there for MVP, taking three heroes down on the side of Nubi, and it was Nubi who were looking to fight that off the back of their own smoke. What a heads up play from QO, letting out the Requiem at that point in time. He was so close to getting stunned when they initiated him, but just the fact that he gets the Requiem off before the fight starts, even if it's not on top of a hero, he hits all five heroes with the slow with the minus damage from the Requiem, made the world of difference there. If he does not get that Requiem off in the start, and only the Death Requiem, they probably get three or four owed in that fight. Instead, they take it three to one and get a tower. Yeah, absolutely key for the side of MVP. They do have the BKB now on it. They did not even have slash there. They actually won without they did, slash. Yeah. It was on cooldown. And, and, I mean, that that's scary. really well. If you're winning, a, well, if you're losing a fight and the joke hasn't used Omni Slash, you've got to be a little bit worried. And the net worth as well. SF really starting to break away here from the TA. And let's not forget the cast as well. I think Witch Doctor's casts in this game have been really, really good. Nuts is doing a good job at identifying 
when to throw it and just reading the fight very well. Oh, it's shot onto Femi. They've got the cooks as well, but they don't have any detection, at least now not on the June. Now, Banana coming in with the Z true. Now the Hex onto Femi. Nowhere for the bounty to run, and Anubi will find themselves a lone bounty hunter. This could be a call for Roche, actually. They know Requiem is down. Yeah. They're okay. five on four, and they're next to the pit, but... Oh, wow. He was thinking about he it. Was, he was. He, he repped himself up there with a the roll with another strike. Cancels it in the end. But as you said, yeah, I mean, Newbie certainly could go for it with the melt with the Desolator. It is risky, though. They should know Omni Slash is up. Now Requiem is off cooldown again. And fighting in the pit against Wish Doctor is always scary when you don't have BKBs. Oh, they go for a charge here. Onto Rabbit on the bottom. Now this he could be very well work. Camp. He's got the Omni This time there's no tower. Oh, oh they don't want to go for it. They're a little bit too scared. A little bit worried that Newbie would be waiting in the wings to counter it. They're going to play it safe and hold back on that one. SF continuing to farm now, coming up to 1,300 gold on top of the BKB. Moo, look for the tier one in the middle lane. Should be able to find it as well. A charge will be coming through. I think Moo's going to be well and truly over to the other side of the map. Well, at least he's going to try to march. He's going to follow through with this one. Now, Rabbit blinking forward. They want to catch out the Space Cow. Going for it. Nuts and Febby are there with a the backup. But is it going to be enough? The cast bouncing between Banana and Moo. But Rabbit with the Sonic Wave will blow up the Bramage Spirit Breaker. He's going to buy back QO with the Requiem for the River. But now with the Winters goes on to KP, holding the jungle in place. Moo will be able to find that. It's too much damage here for the TA. But there with the hook shot onto QO, holding him in the place. Now he's turning around with the raises. June getting low. But Moo, he's doing too much damage with his Desolator. Now March with the charge. He needs to do something here because Marge brought back if he finds his kill, and he will. Can he find Rabbit as well? Rabbit blinking himself away. It looks like the Queen will get herself out of this one. She but might Marge try for there. the snipe on Febby here. Is it, she could have got the kill here, but might have risked her own life and plays it safe. Could have been a risky one, but March, of course, with the buyback there, well worth it to find that kill onto Mill on the TA. And it looked like a completely suicidal charge in the first place, but he actually wanted to bait Newbie to jump on him, and he got that. He got what he wanted. Very nice indeed for the side of MVP, but still 15 for 15. I mean, I think a lot of people thought, that, you know, looking at how these teams perform at the group stage, this would be a very close game, and, and you don't get much closer than this at the moment, Cinder. That is very, very even. Of course, one thing favoring MVP is the track gold, and Bounty Hunter is not that far away from level 11, which is a, a big swing in every track kill that should not be underestimated. And Witch Doctor... Oh, he's has, so close to the axe. He has quietly just been surviving every single fight and found one kill every fight and a couple of assists. He's now only 900 away, as well as level 11. This is going to be a really good timing compared to what we usually see. This is going to be well below average time on this Ags, unless the game takes a really bad turn for him right now. What do we got for Newbie? We got a Blink Dagger on TA, so a lot more mobility and the ability to... Most likely, she wants to jump and blow up the Witch Doctor, I think, so they don't get that Death Ward off in the cask, which has been a really big problem. Queen of Pain just finished her Aghanims, so way more frequent ultimates with a little more damage. Looking towards Roshan here. Has been spotted out by the side trap, but well, with the double damage, QO says we're going to go for this one, guys. He's going to do it fairly quickly here with the damage and the crits from KP, but I'm sure Newbie will want to contest. This is a very good placement for the healing ward. The least likely cliff to be checked by Stand the Wyvern. Moving in with the Arctic Burner. He's got the Winter's Curse available. He's gonna. So he's gonna use it straight away now with the jump in here from Moo. The damage, the side blades. Look at the side blades go. Now the Doom with a hook shot. Trying to disrupt the fight, keeping Nuts and Febby out of it. Sand Shake and Moo, though, they're getting on QO's done too much here. With the Rick Rim and the White Right Click. Sand Shake, you can't fly away from that. Oh, Banana with the biggest figure of his life. Taking a kill and return. It's a two for two so far. Sonic Wave from Rabbit Clicks. QO and Febby. Febby getting himself south. south. QO going north. Doom's gonna Try and chase this one down. Q is gonna look to the left. No, he's going for the team. Oh, no. he, he gets himself out. He gets himself out, which means that MVP take that trade there. Three for two. I cannot the believe he got out of that mess. Oh man, unbelievable. And it's oh, been really goodness. interesting to see QO's development throughout the tournament because going into the tournament, we've kind of. One of the characteristics we've said for him is that it's like feast or famine. He's got yes. incredible games and pretty weak performances, and his first few days were not good. And then all of a sudden, it's like he, he flicked a switch and he just started playing well every single game. And we're sure he's just showing very high skill again in this game. Oh, Rabbit, I'm uh, going to give him a bit of a 1v1. Rabbit says, no, you, I'm out of there. But again, MVP win the fight. Yes. Three to two. Yeah, three to no two. Omni Slash. He, he got a spin off, which I think in that moment was a mistake from KP. I think it, it, the moment he got out of the Winter's Curse, he needs to Omni Slash immediately. Going for the spin first is very greedy. Look at this move. He's oh, yeah. If they get away with this. If they can finish it off here, this is going to be massive. I don't think MVP are going to get there in time. They are They've near the pit, but look at the damage the move's doing. Newbie are going to be able to take Roshan straight from under their noses. And that's going to be the Aegis onto TA. 
Oh, at the moment, 24 minutes in, 18 to 17, an incredibly packed game. Oh, there's the Ags on waste I would like a stat on the average time on this 24 pickup. I feel like this is insane. very early. And he's level 11 as well. Yeah. He's got the second point. That's perfect. Well. If they don't address him in the up and coming fight, and if they don't see he has the Ags, it's going to catch them off guard, and it's going to hurt real bad. Looks like Moo is going to be going for that BKB. As oh, he's out That's really it. far on his own. Question is if they realize this. Oh, they're going to go for... Oh, Ooh, uh, the, uh, he's cool. As soon as the track came out, blinked straight back. Doesn't want to be caught around for any kind of funny business. But one thing, looking at the net worth at the moment, you have got, of course, Cure here on the SF at the top. But then it's followed by the Corp and the TA, and Jokes, he's a few thousand behind. I mean, is this something that MVP should be worried about? With the Jokes falling behind in terms of farm? Mm. Well, it's not ideal. Let's put it that way. They, they would definitely like him to, to have a bit better of a game. But because of Shadow Fiend's great game so far, and especially the Witch Doctor, can probably compensate for the lack of physical damage that would come out from Juggernaut. So I think it would be a way bigger problem if Witch Doctor wasn't having a good game. But since he is, he can maybe carry it through. Okay. And I guess, of course, Joke, the fact that he has got the four points in the, in the healing ward, you know, pushing towns yeah. without the Voodoo Restoration, it, absolutely invaluable for a team like MVP that like to group up as much as they do and fight as much as they have been in the first 25 minutes of this match. I started out a bit slow, the game, but they've, they've definitely changed the pace of the game. What was that? The average time was 33 minutes? Uh, 33 minutes, so I believe, like and it's now 30. Nine minutes sub so average. That's pretty good. It's, it's pretty insane. That is very early. And the question is, is he going to be able to find the opportunity to get a good duration of death ward out? Because there's a fair few uh, abilities on the side of Nubi that can be used to cancel it. Yeah, most likely they're going to use the clockwork hookshot on someone else. I think in every single fight, the clockwork hookshot has been used more or less exclusively on the Shadow Fiend, I would say, but maybe once or twice in the Juggernaut as well. Um, I think he's going to have to change that and target out the Witch Doctor at this point. But once again, if they don't realize in time, if they just win one big team fight because of the surprise Witch Doctor acts, it's been worth it. They need good. to identify the problem, and, and I think Clockwork is the one to solve it. They need the curse on Juggernaut or Shadow Fiend, so they kill each other. That's very important. Yeah, absolutely. It's not and Lion can, of course, catch Witch Doctor with the blink, but he's more than he's more likely to engage on Shadow Fiend if he can catch him before he gets PKB up, and maybe they're looking they for him. There's Banana revealing the blink straight in, and he'll be able to secure okay. the kill there. Onto the Juggernaut. Big pick off there from the side of Newbie with that smoke. He died. And off the back of that as well, Newbie. They might look for more here. We've got them pushing down the middle lane. The amount of damage the Moon does is going to make short work here at this tier two. The question is, are MVP going to do anything in response with the Juggernaut down? It's going to be rather hard for them to do so. Cure, trying to get a look in. Ward's been dropped down here by Banana. Oh, they're not going to be able to do anything about this, and Newbie will be able to claim themselves the first tier two here of the game. It's just a look, yeah. MVP just can't get themselves in on this one. They're going to have to let it go. And Newbie may, may just very well look for more Taz. I mean, there's still the tier one here sitting on the top lane. It's going to be more money into the pockets of the side of Nubian. We're now seeing Quat overtaking the SF in terms of farm, and TA very, very close in tow. I mean, this game's been back and forth. It's, it's still incredibly even, but over the entirety of the game, we are seeing Nubi now making the most significant lead against the side of MVP. Yeah, this is when their lineup really comes online. The moment TA gets the blink, the balance of the game will shift. And, of course, it was also the Roshan kill, which has played a very big role. Now, if they don't manage to use the Aegis in the fight, I think MVP will have uh, a, a small timing window where they can go for that fight with the Death Ward if they can find an engage with the Spirit Breaker. Or if they just oh, hook shot get jumped on and Q He's come out, Lippert 2 up, up to BKB, the Red Crew, catch a June, bringing him down to half. But now Sanchez with the Winter's Curse up to Nurse, Marge starts to hit his own team. KP coming in with the Blade Fury, they'll finish off the Witch Doctor there. And now Omni Arch trying to fight this through with another strike, but move, taking a fair bit of damage. Sonic went from Rabbit, but the Omni Snatch coming through Rabbit, he's got the Yules to dodge it off. June moving in to try and help out the Quap, the Quap. Oh! Oh, is able to blink himself away. Now Juice in trouble. They're turning it around. They're looking for Moo here as well. They might find four. Aegis is going to hit the deck. They've got Blade Fury. He's dead. He is, he so is dead. not going to blink oh, out of this, this one. This guy's getting out of this one. Moo stuck between a rock and a hard place. He'll go down as well. Four kills for the side of MVP. And they only lose the Witch Doctor. Which yourself is a little bit sad. He didn't get to use the Death Ward. But I think he'll be fine with what the team were able to do on top of that. Look at the gold increase and the XP increase. Trap it gold, is my so crucial in that fight that the Clockwork... He engaged too far ahead of his team. It's that simple. He finds an opening, great. But there's no follow-up, so Shadow Fiend is just free to use his BKB, turn on them, use Requiem, and they get a really good initiation angle for both the Juggernaut and the Spirit Breaker, immediately killing off the Wyvern, who can't go sift through the spin. And then March gets a double charge as well. And 
in that kind of situation, the hook shot needs to set up for a blink hex, or, you know, the blink hex just engages by itself. But they cannot jump on QO like this anymore. He's simply too tanky, outputs way too much. If they're going to go for that, they need to all in. Hook shot, blink TA, blink the lion, just blow him up in one go, and then take the fight from there. And instead, they get, they get cleaned up pretty bad. Absolutely, yeah. Only Quop survived and got a shivers, and she got lucky to escape as well. She was like, oh, the I mean, the final right click nearly connected. Rabbit was just able to get that blink off. And well, I talked about newbies starting to break away. Well, MVP just shut that entire lead back down. And we're heading back to pretty much zero in terms of both XP and gold at this point. 22 to 19, coming up to 13 minutes in. And uh, what's been an incredibly action packed game so far, Sin? Yeah, we've got 41 kills in 30 minutes. That's. A kill on a third per minute. It's not bad at all. Pretty good. Not bad at all. A lot of fun to watch. And, uh, and I think that was there a good death ward in that fight? Because I didn't. Yeah, well, he I died. Didn't, he, I didn't he, he was the only one that died. On the yeah. Side so it was that. even without a death ward yeah. that they got yeah. that fight. It's just kind of scary uh, for newbie. It's still a, a problem they have to address. But I think, I think in this game, Sunshine has been a little bit too aggressive on his positioning on the wyvern. We generally see other teams using wyvern playing further back. But it's been there's been a couple of situations where he moves in, gets caught off guard by the juggernaut, and just uh, shut down. He has to play a little bit more passively to get multiple Splinter Blasts off and maybe get a mobility item so that he can engage with Curse and get out again. Yeah, we haven't really been able to, uh, to kind of see him save his team a lot because, as you no. said, he just dies far, far too quickly. And I guess this is the thing with Sandshane. We used to see him playing supports like Earthshake, a very kind of aggressive initiating supports. And Winter Wyvern is obviously a very different play style. And this game is, is not, not been working out all the time for him. And the MVP ready to put some pressure on this middle lane onto the Tier 2. Sanshin just throwing out the Splinter Blast, coming in with the Arctic Burn Harass, but there's a charge on him, and QO moving up to the high ground. Can they find this with a Hex onto QO from Banana? Maybe they could turn this one around. The SF's already a half out. Moon coming in with the right click. BKB is popping both the TA and the SF. The Winter's Curse cancelling the Requiem there. QO caught out for this one. Oh, the D-Slash onto Sanshin, though. They'll find the wife and KP moving in onto Rabbit. Mars charging forward onto June with Blade Fury as well. June in a lot of trouble. Will get taken out with the raises there from QO. And it will be a three for one buyback, in fact, from Lion here. But he's not going to be able to do too much with both the white man and the clock down as well. And an MVP may very well just look to try and even push this up to the high ground. Yeah, this is very confident, but they know a lot of big abilities are on cooldown. There's no Winter's Curse. There's no Queen of Pain ult for a little bit. Oh, oh might have extended after all, though. Damage to the finger as well. Q are getting low. Oh, March with the charge just in time to stop Rabbit getting the final touch in. Moon will blink forward, get the physical damage in. They'll bring down the SF. Now holding himself in place here with the Yules, trying to get himself out. Rabbit's going to be okay. There's now MVP on the retreat. Banana moving forward here. Oh, the hex here onto Marge. Thanks to the vision granted by the rocket flare. And now Algebra move with the right clicks, trying to shoot this one out. Marge. Febby's going to look for the TP out. Will escape. Marge as well tries for it. He won't be as lucky. They'll find the Spirit Breaker. And Newbie there with the successful defense. MVP got a little bit over eager there. I think they're starting to feel like they're on top of the world because their Shadow Fiend has survived multiple fights, but a big part of it has just been that Yubi's engagements haven't been that good. And once you're in the enemy base and you're just standing next to their tier 3, it's very, very easy for them to jump on your Shadow Fiend and shut him down like that. So you need to be a little bit more careful and some big kills going Yubi's way here. They did have to... Who did they buy back? Yeah, they they bought back the, the Clockwork oh, as well. The they bought back Lion and then Clock, so... Not really the best of trades, but they still got a couple of core kills, and even though it doesn't show much on the graph, the fact that Shadow Fiend and Spirit Breaker on the sidelines for a bit should give uh, Newbie a little bit of a farm advantage for the next for about a minute. I mean, you got to look at the, the Moo uh, TA as well. He's got 3.8k gold now on top of that Desolate. He's got the BKB done as well. I mean, does he just go straight for an MKB here, or does he go for crit? I'm wondering if he wants to go for Butterfly. It okay. just seems like a natural build-up against the Shadow Fiend, who already showed his ultimate orb, so he's definitely not going in MKB right now. And Juggernaut's bought a Basher. They haven't seen that, though, but he's probably going to assume that they're not going to go for MKBs as their next items of choice. It is, however, going to be... Demon, it's, I think it's a Daedalus. He's just going to yeah. hit super hard. And unless... Well, MKB against the Solo Crest could also be the choice. Because if he misses the Meld Strike, that is a big problem. That is a lot of damage lost. I'm not applying that. The question is, at this point, do MVP... I mean, QO, as you said, picking up the ultimate orb, looking for his next big item. Can they afford to still look for fights here? I mean, do Nubi need to go aggressive, or can both teams afford to just sit back and farm up? I think it's all about Roshan right now. Uh, controlling the area, whatever way you do it, if it's by fighting or by, by pushing out lanes and farming, whatever works, just don't give away Rosh right now for either team. It's absolutely crucial. And MVP, there. They want to go for it. Oh, Rosh is up. Let's go. Yeah, I mean, the damage with the Sony to mess around. is melting. Yeah, Maybe this goes very fast with their minus armor and 
Oh, a little bit of a bash. He's been scattered out by the Rocket Flare. Move just hitting away the Ancients, and, and it looks like that Rocket Flare was enough to spook MVP right back. They back themselves off, Newbie are smoked up. They really want to try and jump in onto this one, but MVP, they're playing a bit wiser. They're backing themselves right up into their jungle. Kuro oh, actually has out. a Guardian now. Oh, he's got it complete? In a second. He just needs, uh, he needs a point booster and an Orb of Venom, and he has 1,400 gold. So he needs one wave. He's going to buy the Orb of Venom in base, probably send it to their own secret shop, and then fight out to him. If he can get that before the Roche fight, that could make a really big difference. But of course, Newbie can snipe this really, really quickly if they want to. Yeah, the Pretty pit. good position. Of course, TA traps are excellent for these mid-game stalemates, giving a little bit more information. Even if they get countered, you know there's at least one hero in the neighborhood. And the rocket flare coming out for June, they're revealing the couple of the heroes on the high ground. Newbie, they move away from the Roche pit for the time, but they're going to go back towards it. They know that this really is the point of contention here that could swing the game uh, in, in both ways at this point. Uh, and it seems like it's been QO's approach in the games of Shadowfiend we've seen to go for this this build. Like, very, very tanky build. Not War the March. highest of damage. He wants to go straight in, charging onto Banana. Fight's gonna kick off, looking for the Nether Strike. Winter's Curse now thrown down onto Marsh. Move coming in with a finger as well. Marsh just a little bit too tanky. June hook shining across. Sonic Wave blasts down Marsh on the Spirit Break, but the Omnis Slash coming through. Not he'll be able to find the kill onto the Clockwork. And KP moving forward with the Blade Fury. That fine move is a killing spree now for the Juggernaut. And then for Sancho as well. The Scardi from QO is just doing too much damage. Double kill here for the Shadow Fiend. And MVP clean up, and off the back of that, easy that looks Roche. to take an easy, easy Roshan. Yeah, they could even consider Raxing mid. It's being pinged out. I'm not sure if they want to go for it after Roche. This Roche should take them a good, like, five or ten seconds with the, all the minus armor they have. They're going to give it to QO by the looks of it. And honestly, I think this might be a lane of Rax. There's 50 seconds on TA. There is no way in hell Newbie win a team fight without their TA, without Winter's Curse, and without Finger. It's just not going to happen. They have Healing Ward and two lives in the Shadow Fiend. He could just go in front and he won't die. So the question is, do MVP have the confidence and do they believe that the TA does not have buyback? If they saw the MKB, they would know. Well, QO is hanging very, very closely to this tower. And looks like they want to try and go for it. Maybe, as you said, they spotted it out. And they realized there's no TA for sure for 20 Oh, that was an aggressive blink. Right. Rabbit needs to be careful. Can't fight this, but he ends up just having to walk himself away. Well, the restoration for Nuts doing too much in terms of in terms of healing, Splinter Blast coming out to a few of them. KP will duke it out here with a Blade Fury. Death War back up in six seconds. Good hold. And Only losing the tower here for Newbie is very, very good. Now the healing ward will be up, but it's too late. TA will respawn. They might still try to go for it, though. Let's right, be a little bit careful here. Than... QO's mana is very low. He actually won't be able to use anything else than Requiem for the fight break out. Well, with the Earth Spike onto QO, and they're going to follow this one up. He's just going to smash it away at Mew. Now with KP going in with a Blade Fury. Oh, Drew's trapped himself in with him. He'll be able to get himself out of the cogs. And Q, as you said, down to half health now. No mana. Maybe this will be the time that MVP keep themselves backed up. Or do they go back in? Healing themselves up here. Now, nah, March is charging away. Looks like that's it for the time being. And Ping's coming out to the bottom lane. Looks like they're going to be content with just trying to take a tier two. I, I, I think Newbie wanted to defend this. They're coming out of the base. Coming out towards this tier two. Rabbit on the front lines. They're going to be linked back. The track's already been thrown out here by Febby. It's going to be very hard for Newbie to fight into this one and catch MVP off guard. And with the right click of QO, they'll be able to find themselves another tier two here the side of MVP. And nothing that Newbie can do against it. They have taken a massive lead over the last five minutes. They've, this game has been very, very close. And all of a sudden, we're in the five digits lead for MVP. They've taken all tier twos. They've taken to tier three in the mid lane. They still have the Aegis and their Shadow Fiend could buy a new core item very soon. As well as their Juggernaut almost having Abyssal if that is his item of choice. This is pretty scary for the defending champions. I was going to say, this is the team from the wildcard, MVP Phoenix. Really giving the defending champions a run for their money. And if anything, MVP definitely in the better position at this point. So they're going to move forward, maybe try and go for the high ground here. Moves being tracked up a banana here with a stone onto QO. The damage can through, but it's just not enough. QO is just too damn tanky. With a healing ward dropped as well by KP. Winter's Curse now coming out. KP's going to fall. They'll fight the kill off the Juggernaut, but QO with a Requiem coming out. Move. He's been called in brace. He's going to be okay for the time being, but they're just going to continue to fight. June's had to back himself out on the sidelines. Banana getting very, very low here. Throws out the finger. QO might just fall here. No, Moo, he hasn't got the damage. No, oh, the Palos, he can't. The bounces. Moo out in place. He's going to go down. Will buy back straight away. It's a double kill for QO, though. He's incredibly low, but he's still got that Aegis here. Will go down once, but he's going to be back for round two. Moo trying to force March back out the base. Walk in the SF2 to fight up against. He's going to get hexed up straight away. But again, the cars passing through. Onto Moo with the charge. Onto Banana. MVP. Oh, the
It's a nice Sonic wave, but that's pretty much it. There's no follow-up, and Rabbit just has to blink himself the hell out of there. 34 for 24, MVP breaking the base, and Newbie falling apart. Still 80 seconds without the TA. And they've got the healing ward up, so that great Sonic wave effectively did absolutely nothing. He's going to need to wait another 20 seconds for a secondary one. This is easily two lanes of racks. They need something big in Newbie. They could mega them. They've got a full minute on the TA. No one's going to kill QO if the TA is dead. The only one who has a, a decent chance would be the the Juggernaut with uh, Wyvern's Winter's Curse onto the Shadow Fiend. But they don't have it yet. Rabbit, he does not have Viper either! Race might just save him for the time. No, he goes down another death for a drop down. Judas is GG. Nubi are out. The defending champions defeated in the first stage of the elimination matches. And MVP Phoenix will climb themselves forward. Wow. Wow. That has got to be, that has got to feel really good for MVP. Going into this tournament, of course, March said they think they have a really good shot at top eight. They're feeling confident, they're feeling prepared, uh, using experience from previous years to, to try to carry themselves further in this tournament. This is the first big step for them. It's uh, more than, I think they just stepped up about $150,000, I think, now to in this game. 150 so, uh, k in this game. Great improvement, very well executed strategy, and I think really importantly, best of one series, a lot of people are expecting in these elimination matches, some teams might try a cheese strat of some sort. Pretty much just a standard MVP Phoenix strategy, just, just well executed. Skill. Pure player skill, QO's performance on that SF, absolutely flawless. 15 kills, 18 assists, only dying the four times. I mean, from the start as well, we saw him in lane. He didn't necessarily do the best against the tier, but he was able to stand up against it. And the harassment from Wyvern didn't phase him. They carried it through to the late portion of the game, and Anubi just didn't have the potential to carry against what MVP had achieved. We saw MVP take the rush, and then off the back of that, the pressure was all on, full force onto Anubi. And Phoenix, they take it, they move forward. These guys coming through from the wild card with the incredible performance. I'm very excited to see, and now they get to a best of three. So now they have a, they can have a bad game and, and still win a series from here on out. So this is the scariest, this is the scariest match of the main event. So they've got through the, I, I was about to say they got through the hardest part. I think the hardest part is still to come. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, the scariest, it's, the best of one is It's definitely gonna over. step up, definitely gonna step up. But we're gonna head over to the analyst to hear what they have to say about that, that fantastic match.